and bands, channel optimization basics, and we're gonna talk a little bit about YouTube Live examples. So lots of partners usually ask us, what is the impact of a music video when it's uploaded onto YouTube? Or onto YouTube? So, so actually what we've actually learned in the past few months um, from, news and, uh, from News and Music Connect is that it directly impacts your audio streams up to, up to 40% meaning that it increased your audio streams up to 40%, and it's the same that since the release of the music video. Therefore, what we usually see then after a music video is released is that we hope for you to consistently upload videos continuing on so that you remain that 40% increase in audio streams such as Spotify and Apple Music. This is a really key important thing because it shows that consistency is a key important player for YouTube and for you and uploading content. Now, another thing that I get a lot of questions about from my partners is, how do I maximize my promotional impact on YouTube? Well, we've actually made it simple for you today and separated it into two large categories, which is growing viewers and converting fans. And really, the only four things that you really need to get out of this presentation today is one, how to do YouTube premieres, two, releasing multiple music videos for priority tracks, Three, sharing green room videos. Four, engaging with your fans. And we'll be deep diving into these sections today. So an example of this, which I'm sure that you probably all are going to love, is a, a group that is not so well known, more, more like really well known around the world right now, is Black Pink, with their single, Kill This Love. So you'll see right here what they've actually done by talking to the main point that we just discussed right now. An example is that they actually released their music video as a one video, and they had five teaser videos. After they released that, they had multiple versions of their video by releasing eight other videos that had their audio track in there, including two dance versions, four focus camera videos, and a two live performance videos. And they also had behind the scenes making of the video, nine Blackpink diaries, and four community posts. This is just for, this is like all the promotion that is done for just one single. If you take a step back, we really need to think about how much have we actually done. What I usually see with more music partners is that it's just, we release one music video, a teaser, a music video, and maybe a behind the scenes. But as you can see, there's so much more opportunity here. So the first subject that we're going to be talking about is growing viewership. And under growing viewership is the premiere's function. So it's kind of interesting because YouTube, what is YouTube premieres, right? YouTube premieres actually helps artists build excitement and hype leading up to the release of a new content. Basically. The concept of it is kind of what you think of what I would say like Channel V, Thailand, Channel v or MTV back in the day, where everybody would come back to the come to a specific, specific time just to watch one particular music video. Now, there are several recommendations around doing premieres, and we're going to walk you through them. So, so one of them, first of all, you need to consider what are the types of videos that you should be doing in terms of a video premiere. I obviously, I think it's an official music video that's the leading for a single, should always do a music premiere live streams or first episodes of a series. Timing is also extremely important. You need to know who is your audience, what time they're going to be up, what, when are they, where are they. Um, lead time is also another important thing. Um, you need to have teasers to cross-promote them. You need to use the links to cross-promote them around their social media and their audiences too. And definitely the lead time that we recommend is usually a 24-hour lead time. How to set up a premiere. I think this is really simple. It's basically how you upload a video. The only difference that you're going to be doing is toggling the premiere video when you schedule the premiere itself. So one, you upload a video. Two, you fill out the metadata. Three, you'll just be adding the simple other thing right here is by toggling the music video right here. Some other pro tips that we have is that to, you'll, make sure, you'll need to make sure that you you'll need to make sure that you'll make sure that you need to have the correct URL for the for the video itself. You tease the content via your description, and thirdly, 
and you correctly schedule the premiere. I've had a lot of partners who've actually scheduled the premiere at the incorrect time by scheduling it during the morning time instead of the evening time themselves. So please make sure that you take a look at that too. And also by the time zones of when uh, your fans are mostly there. And fourthly is by choosing a good, um, good thumbnail, right? Because the first thing the partner, the first thing that your users are going to see is basically the thumbnail of the music video itself right after you upload this. Now, if we talk about thumbnails, I want to mention about getting the audience. Um, we want to make sure that you actually create a good thumbnail. Getting audience to click the video is a key thing, and therefore selecting interesting thumbnails is always important. So you want a thumbnail to be clear, high depth, high resolution, as we've always talked before. But also note that that can also note that you can always come back and change the thumbnail after you've scheduled the premiere. It doesn't mean that you only need to stick to that one thumbnail. An example of changing your thumbnail before a premiere, before before a premiere that could benefit you is what Sean Mendes did for one of his singles. He actually had a thumbnail before the premiere, and then he switched it out before the premiere video, the premiere of the video premiere, to let fans know that oh, he's actually sitting there in front of his laptop, meaning that he was going to actually chat with his fans, and this created more hype and excitement around the video premiere itself. The other things that you need to consider is how you can promote the premiere, of the, the premiere of the music video. In regards to other ways to promote the premiere, you need to make sure you need to announce it to your fans, obviously, through different social medias like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You tell your fans to set the reminder to get a push notification for when the video launches. And in case you're wondering, YouTube will help push notifications to those of you who have rung the bell 30 minutes before and once the premiere starts. And then we'll even send out some notifications out to people we think are potential fans of your channel who haven't subscribed just in case that they're interested, but that's not always guaranteed. Now, on to this other function that we have. So every single YouTube premiere is a chat, there's a chat function. The chat function is always available when YouTube, when YouTube premiere is available. Um, you can actually have, um, I, I would say that the best scenario for this is that you should always have someone there to be chatting with you. For example, you would have an admin there to respond and talk to different fans. The best case scenario is actually to have the artist there to respond. And definitely you can directly respond to different fans that are in the chat room and you can delete different messages in case they're like offensive. offensive. The live chat, based on live chat, live chat best practices. We also have different other things such as chat moderation, key black, keyword blacklisting. We also have a function for slow mo, just in case if like there's thousands of thousands of people who are chatting at a time, you can make it slower so that you can actually read the chats. And that's how chat, top chat function too. Once your video, once you finish your live video. Um, don't forget that it always turns into a regular YouTube video or a video, VOD video for VOD video. For. Therefore, you have to always use the regular best practices of YouTube. So therefore, once it turns into a VOD video, don't forget to use end screens or info cards for the video. And don't forget at the end of the live streams, you should always thank your fans and ask them to subscribe and ring the bell so they don't miss out on future videos too. Now, I think this is also a very important thing, um, for, especially for every single company that is in here. There's probably a digital person that takes care of your YouTube channel. If you do a live stream, also be aware that YouTube has very great tools and analytics that, to be able to measure um, to be able to measure its success. So a few things that you can do um, during a live stream is that you can check of the live concurrent views of how many people have watched the video itself and actually how many people had messaged you during the live chat too. All right, so an example of this is a very well-known artist is Ariana Grande. Um, she did a YouTube premiere who had, which had over 850,000 fans tuning in. Um, this was for the song Thank You Next. Uh, so she basically strategically programmed her premiere 
go live. She promoted it through her trailers, her sneak peek videos, through different social media posts. She used YouTube's community tab um, to promote it. And the result was that it got over 400,000 chat messages, 150,000 reminders from her bell notifications, and over, like I said, 850,000 fans watching the video itself. All right, so that section was for YouTube premieres. I hope you guys use that soon and use that for a lot of the videos that are your prioritized videos. So the next section for us here is also multiple videos and why you need to do that. So the question is probably, Kit, why do I need to release so many versions of a music video for a particular song? Well, first of all, in the US, it's for, it's for the Billboard chart purpose. But for the rest of the world, it's been proven that music videos other than official ones actually have a positive impact on the watch time. A question that I usually get a lot too is that, Kit, when should I actually release the music video? When should I actually release the audio video? And when should I actually release the lyric video? Well, technically, there's no correct answer to that. But the correct answer for, for this, for sure, is that you need to have something that is released right away on the date and time when the official audio is released out onto other platforms. Right? So if it's available on radio, on TV, Spotify, Apple Music, whatsoever, you need to make sure that you have some sort of um, format available on YouTube because people are going to come on and search for it, whether it's going to be an audio video or a lyric video or a music video. So I'm going to go through some formats, and some of them are going to be very obvious what you already know of, but there are going to be some hints and some tricks here that I want to tell you about. So official music video, you already know that this is the version, this is the video that's going to get drive the most views for you. Um, I just want to mention that you need to put in the title of the video as like, you know, in quotations or as in parentheses, um, official music video, because that's going to help people identify that this is the video um, that they should be looking at. And also what another thing that people tend to forget about is to to add an end screen at the end of the video itself too, so that it drives more traffic to other videos in your channel. Lyric videos are also important. I think you, this is pretty self-explanatory already, but um, one cool idea that I've also seen this just happen recently is that a lot of people are starting to explore with lyric videos by doing several types and several versions of them. Recently, for example, Troy Zivan just did this with his new single, Take Yourself Home. He did this in multiple languages, um, a lyric video that had multiple languages in it. So that's a cool idea that I saw too. And also, Troy Sivan also not only did that with his lyric video, but as you guys can see that a lyric video is also kind of what we say here is a visualizer video, which is basically a video that doesn't cost much. It's basically a computer graphic video, right? And um, basically, it's sometimes just there just to, to be released before the music video is released. Think of Lil Nas's Old Town Road before they had the official music video release. And then in terms of live performance, I think this is obvious. This is obvious. Artists right now, um, well, artists before, they tend, artists before, they always toured probably every single other day of the night. All that content could have been converted and showcased on YouTube some way, somehow, right? As for now, um, I know we're in a pandemic time. Um, artists can still do live performance at their homes, maybe in a terms in an acoustic set or in a different way. And then lastly is other, other music video, videos using the song's master recording. So this itself is another version. I think this is plainly simple, very simple. You use the master recording and you create a dance version, you create a remix version, you create a fans version, you maybe create compile content footage and call it a tour version, the behind the scenes version where it has the background as just the music, or maybe even a TikTok version. Right, which is coming a very popular, a vertical, vertical video version, right? So as long as it uses the master recording, that's just like another form of a music video. And then again, as I said, you always can always you always need to measure your performances here. So in short, um, you can also measure your impressions. How many people saw the thumbnails for these videos that you've been creating? How many people clicked through it? Clicked through? Click, clicked on the videos? 
how many people actually watched the videos, and where were these people coming from. All these metrics and these numbers are, are all coming from our tools that are called YouTube Analytics, and um, we hope that you can utilize them as much as you can. All right. An example of this overall in terms of doing several videos is Dua Lipa. Um, as for her song, Don't Start Now, she released her song, single first and it got 5.2 million in the very first day. Um, and then secondly, within six weeks, she released over 11 versions of the songs, four remixes, live performances, lyric videos, and all sorts of things. And that pushed the video up to almost 171 million views. And then all was um, counted towards the Billboard Top 100 too. So that's pretty amazing. All right. So next now, I'm going to pass it over to Enrique, who is going to be talking about converting fans. Thanks right. so much, Kit. Um, can you hear me OK? Yeah. Great. Um, and I'm pretty sure I accounted for at least 50 of those 171 million uh, views on Dua Lipa's Don't Start Me Now. But uh, today, I'd like to talk to you all about converting fans, which more than any other platform, YouTube gives you so many great options to do just that. And something that I will tell all of you here today that I always tell to the top Filipino creators that I advise is it's not just about getting the viewer to click and watch on one video. It's about getting them to consistently engage with you over time and to become lifelong fans. And that's exactly what today's presentation is all about. So uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Our number one tip in order to do that as an artist and as a record label is to go beyond just uploading those official releases and music videos, but to upload green room content as a supplementary piece of your content strategy. Whether we're talking about behind the scenes footage, tour diaries, documentaries, social activism or vlogs, green room content gives fans a view into what the artist is doing and who they are when they're not on stage. Um, as a fan, I love when artists release this type of stuff because I can't get it anywhere else. So we've seen very clearly that, of course, official music videos are going to get the most views, but green room content actually has a great positive impact on artist watch time and helps to really drive subscriber growth. In some cases, two to three times the rate of the premium music videos. So our overall recommendation is to have a well thought out and developed content strategy and release schedule, but of course, to actively and consistently engage with your audience. Next slide, please. <clears throat> On YouTube, whether you're an artist or a top creator or a media company, it's really important that above all else, you find your own individual voice. It's always important to take a step back and try to realize your overall purpose, your mission, and your voice on your YouTube channel. And when doing that, it's important to ask yourself some of these questions. How would you like to have an impact? What do you want to say? What knowledge or experiences can you share with others? Who are your favorite creative artists, influencers, and creators? What makes them so special and memorable? And therefore, how can you bring all of those messages to life through your YouTube content. And I think somebody who does a great job of this through their 60 second channel trailer is Will Smith. Next slide. So there are so many great genres of content that can thrive on YouTube. Let's take, for example, Rihanna. <clears throat> We all are familiar with Rihanna. I personally have been a huge fan of her since Pondi Replay came out in 2005, which was her first single. But now she's known for so much more than just her music career. She's also a fashion and beauty icon, which she exemplifies through all of her brands and also through her YouTube channel. Um, we know that artists are really talented people and they have a lot of messages to spread and passions to discuss. And YouTube really allows you to explore that. So whether we're talking about F&B, gaming, comedy, feel free to use YouTube to truly express yourself beyond just the music you release. Next slide. 
Besides thinking about the genres of content that an artist can expand into, it also really helps to learn what formats could work. Whether we're talking about mukbangs, let's play, Q&A, ASMR, or even something brand new that you create for yourself, understanding and being inspired by both what formats and genres are working out there on YouTube can help you as an artist understand what might be the best way for you to share your voice and express yourself. Next slide. <clears throat> so as we, as we can all probably attest, um, there's a never ending supply of trends and new challenges on YouTube and on social media. And when done well, these trends can really help your channel's growth. I think above all else, make sure that if you, if you participate in a trend that you do it out of a place of passion and authenticity, and also that you do it in a timely manner. In the perfect world though, you can even capitalize on the trends that you yourself set. So let's take for example, Drake. So two years ago, Drake released the song, In My Feelings, that's the Kiki Do You Love Me dance. And he released that song knowing that this was gonna be a viral dance challenge. Um, this is nothing new. There are many artists and many songs throughout the history of time that are about dances, uh, but Drake knew how to capitalize on it in the age of social media. So fast forward to two years later, just about a month and a half ago, Drake released the song Tusi Slide, which he created with the viral dance challenge in mind. He knew that the Kiki Do You Love Me did so well, and he wanted to build on that and create a 2020 version. And now, the Tusi Slide was one of the most popular and viral dance challenges in the world. It created so much user-generated content, and all of that helps to promote and expand Drake's personal brand and all of his music as a whole. Next slide. Collaborations are one of my favorite things to come out of YouTube. And I think when done well, it can really help an artist reach and expand to new audiences. In a perfect scenario, the strengths and weaknesses of artist A and creator B who collaborate, they should complement each other. And also, ideally, the audiences of each channel, of each artist and creator, they should have somewhat, in, somewhat similar interests as well. This usually makes for the most effective and successful collaboration. Overall though, if you're gonna choose to collaborate with a creator or another artist, make sure you choose wisely, make sure that there's chemistry and think about going beyond a one-off. You know, how can I turn this format into something that's repeatable, that allows me to feature other people or get featured in other people's channels on a consistent basis? Next slide. So we know of course that um, artists have really hectic schedules, especially when fingers crossed, you know, we can tour and perform again. So if you're able to dedicate an entire afternoon or a day to shooting YouTube green room content or original YouTube content, try to make the most out of it. Try to see if you can bulk shoot and maximize the output of your production days by shooting multiple episodes when possible. And then when it comes time to uploading, start strong, Make sure that you have more than one video available at launch. And also just in general, as an artist, as you're expanding into YouTube, be able and willing to experiment, not only with the length of the videos, but also as mentioned through the formats as well. Next slide. <clears throat> as Kit was mentioning earlier, YouTube has a lot of really great tools, analytics and metrics that allow you to assess your performance. Whenever an artist starts uploading new content, it's only natural for them to want to check in and see how that individual video is performing. But let's remember that the entire point of green room content is to promote the artist's platform as a whole. So once you start uploading green room content, it's really great to see if that green room, green room content is having any positive effect for your entire channel's statistics. And to do that, you can look at your build an audience tab check geography data, demographic data, see where people are watching you from and what subtitles they're using, total unique viewers, average views per viewer, and subscribers gained or lost as a result of the new content you're uploading. Next slide. So Coldplay, who we all should know, is a really great example of an artist that is really diving uh, deeply into their YouTube channel and activating it. 
So Coldplay organized their YouTube videos into three major groups, music videos, live performances and remixes, and then two unique long form pieces of original content. And this is the most important point that I'm going to make today in my presentation. Yes, as Kit said, it is going to be your official music videos that garner the most views and reach a mass audience, but it is the green room content that's going to convert them into a lifelong fan. And it's a green room content that's going to keep them coming back to your YouTube channel for more. In a very succinct way, music videos drive mass views. Originality begets fandom. Next slide. <clears throat> So now I'd like to talk about posts and comments. Um, and if what I'm about to tell you sounds really simple and kind of obvious, well, yeah, it really is actually quite simple. Um, it's gonna be all about directly engaging with your fans via your YouTube community tab, which is something that artists already do on their own on other platforms. Next slide. So just to make sure we're all familiar, if you go into a YouTube channel, you'll see that there's the home, then videos, then playlists, and then the community tab. This community tab should be thought of and utilized just like one of your social media networks. And this is because it can do everything your other social media networks can do. And it also has its own specific URL, which you can promote on your other platforms. I think long story short, you should try to make sure that you use it actively, provide a diverse mix of content, and above all else, make it as interactive as possible with your fans. Next slide. So these are just a couple really basic but super important best practices. Number one, program strategically. Um, whether your community tab post is lighthearted and fun, or purposefully strategic. These are all new and different ways for your audience to engage with you. And if I'm a super fan of Dua Lipa, which I am, I'm gonna engage with her post when I see it on my YouTube feed. Second is be authentic. No matter what you do on YouTube, authenticity is key. And lastly, this one is, is something I get asked about a lot from my top creators is, you know, what do I post? What videos do I post? Well. On the YouTube community tab, you can re-embed an old video. You can post pictures, text, moving GIFs, or poll cards. Well, if you're going to re-embed a video into your YouTube community tab, let's remember that the YouTube feed's mission is to distribute the right video to the right user. So your community tab posts shouldn't be a way for you to promote that new video that you just released. Rather, the more strategic way of using it is to post older catalog content of yours when it becomes relevant again. So for example, if it's the one year anniversary of a wildly popular music video, that's a great time to post that video again into your YouTube community tab. Next slide. As I mentioned earlier, engage your audience. So I think that the YouTube community tab is one of the features on YouTube that is most intuitive and most easy to use when shown to someone for the first time. And the same thing is true for viewers. I think that if you can incorporate your YouTube community tab as an integral and consistent part of your holistic digital media strategy, that is a very simple but super impactful way to grow and expand the reach of your YouTube channel. And of course, also to gain that fan loyalty and to convert them into lifelong fans. Next slide. Promote your art. Um, whether we're talking about uh, new uh, like covers of songs, art that your artists actually create, merch, or anything that matters to the artist, you can promote whatever it is you're working on into your YouTube community tab. And that is the best way to directly reach your YouTube audience. Let's remember that as an artist, you're going to be present on several platforms and 100% of your audience on one platform might not also be there on the other platform. But we, what we know for sure, though, is if you're directly engaging with people on your YouTube community tab and you have a million subscribers, that's the most direct way to reach those million subscribers. 
Next slide. Also, you can think about your YouTube community tab as a feed that you can curate. Of course, we are all viewers as well, and we all have our own tastes. And as an artist, you can showcase to your fans whatever it is that you're also watching and paying attention to. And that is a very simple and easy way also to add more layers of interactivity to your YouTube presence. Next slide. So using comments to build a loyal fan base, as I mentioned earlier, it might seem really simple, but let's never underestimate the power and the importance of direct engagement between a fan and an artist. I'll tell you from personal experience, I watch YouTube videos all the time. Every once in a while, I comment on the video and maybe one out of every 50 comments I'll actually get the artist or creator to heart a comment or reply to that comment. And even though that experience is super rare and few and far between, it really brings me closer to that artist and it helps to secure me as a fan for a really long time. So let's never underestimate that. Next slide. So I would like to give a shout out and props to Little Mix, who did a really great job of uploading a variety of community tab posts in order to promote and drive fans to their newest single. So let's look at that journey. First, they amassed 120,000 votes using a simple poll question on their community tab. Then they garnered organic fan engagement when they reposted a cover video of a girl group singing one of their songs. After that, they promoted their unique original content. And then lastly, encourage fans to pre-order their new single. So I always tell my YouTube creators that it's all about consistent engagement over time with a viewer and with a fan. And simply using your community tab even once a week can, can do wonders for your channel and for your audience. Next slide. So channel optimization basics. Um, let's never forget the basics. You know, the fundamentals are called fundamentals for a reason. Now, I always tell my YouTube creators that before you can think about really bold, big content strategy decisions, you always wanna make sure that your channel is organized and it's complete. So next slide. Number one, build a release schedule. And when we're talking about release schedules, let's make sure that it's doable, make sure that it is something that fits within your schedule, but assuming those things, you wanna upload consistently, you wanna upload a diverse set of content, and then lastly, you wanna communicate that schedule to your audience. If the audience is aware of when and how they can consume your YouTube content, it'll be more likely that they will go ahead and consume it. Next slide. Be consistent. We hear that this word consistency thrown around all the time in YouTube circles. And what I would say about consistency is it's not just about how often you upload, but it goes beyond that. It's about your tone of voice. It's about how you edit the videos. It's about what you choose to talk about and the different formats that you utilize. So consistency is something that you should exemplify throughout your entire YouTube creative process, not just in terms of how often you upload. Optimizing your thumbnails. I think that what Kit said earlier about the premieres is also true for all of your videos. Make sure the thumbnails are eye-catching, make sure that they are exciting, but most of all, make sure they're accurate. We have community guidelines around uh, our metadata spam policies, so make sure you read up on them. <clears throat> Be brief and specific with titles. Um, I, I, I would say that when it comes to YouTube, your metadata, so your titles, your thumbnails, and your descriptions, all of, the, all of those things are meant to capture the attention of your audience, and then the video itself is what keeps their attention. So as it relates to titles, keep it classy, avoid using all caps, directly address the viewer, be brief, and of course, again, make sure it's accurate. Direct fans to more of your videos via end screens and info cards. I think that 
end screens and info cards add a layer of interactivity to your content and just gives people more things to click on and also guides the viewer experience. So standard best practice is to always use them. Let's remember that we have community guidelines, as I mentioned, as well as those advertiser friendly content guidelines and monetization policies. I think all of us right now want to make sure that we're always abiding by the rules and making as much money as possible on YouTube. So let's remember to always refresh ourselves on these policies, make sure we're adhering to them. And for anything else that you need, you can always consult the YouTube Help Center. And I believe that's it. I'll pass it back to Kit now. All right, um, so the next thing what you guys see here on the screen right here is this thing called the official artist channels. You probably noticed within the past year and a half or almost two years now that a lot of channels that are artists have this new verification button that is in a music note right here. This is what we call an official artist channel, right? And this is combining the artist channel with a topic channel. You might have seen before, um, before, if you type in your artist name, hashtag artist name in there, it would generate a topic channel. And those topic channels would actually have an ability for you to subscribe to those channels. Now, if you have an official artist channel and we're able to identify it, you will combine those subscriber numbers and then put them into one single source channel. Any channel that is owned by the artist itself, um, we will make it, we will confirm it and verify it as the official artist channel. Some of the content, such as music video, um, for example, if the music video is, is in vivo or the music video is on a label channel, we will be pulling some of those videos into a, um, in, a, in, a, in a channel section of the official artist channel itself. What other benefits of an official artist channel has? Official artist channels will always be getting access to our latest, newest features, such as, for example, premieres, chat, um, in the future, maybe even these things called super chat, merchandising, um, ticketing, any function that's new with YouTube, um, they'll be getting the access first. Um, one of the things that has happened in Asia and Southeast Asia that we saw is that these channels automatically get YouTube stories and the community function right away, right away without having like to have 10,000 subscribers or whatsoever. Okay, and they also have special YouTube analytics that are made and specifically made for artists to understand analytics easier. All right, if you're interested in getting an official artist channel, um, what you can do is go to the YouTube Help Center, right, and then search about um, official artist channels, right. Um, what it says right there is basically one, one criteria is that you need to be, your channel needs to be a part of the YouTube partner program meaning that you have over 4,000 subscribers and about um, 4,000, I'm sorry, 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. And then you need to create our YouTube, so YouTube creator support team there. Um, and that's, that's how you start applying to get a verification badge right there for official artist channels. All right, on to live streaming real quickly. I know uh, we're in a pandemic state right now and I just wanted to touch really briefly and quickly on live streaming success stories. Um, everybody is doing live streaming and we at YouTube have identified of what a live stream means to us right now. So there are basically four types of live streams. One is a full live stream, which is basically your live streaming from YouTube itself, right? You, you, you're just pushing the live, um, the, um, you're basically live streaming from YouTube itself, basically. The second one is pre-recorded live stream. It's meaning that you recorded something and then you're putting it through the live stream function on YouTube. Thirdly is VOD with Premiere. So very similar to the live stream function itself, but you're going through the, um, the Premiere function instead. Um, the Premiere function has a chat feature. It doesn't have mid-rolls. That's the difference between the, the pre-recorded live stream. Fourth, um, VOD live stream and other platforms. This is basically when you will actually, not our favorite one, but when you actually live stream through Instagram and Facebook, and then you might download those videos and then re-upload it onto YouTube itself, itself as an archive. All right, so some of the examples that we have already of great examples of people doing live streams, there's thousands and thousands of live streams going on right now, right? Is Gustavo Lima, who actually did a, a live stream. He had over 10 million views during his live stream. 
um, concur and then after the live stream within the first 24 hours, it had a total of 23 million views. Um, Love also did something very similar. He did a live stream and it was unlisted. It wasn't even public. It was only meant for like kind of fans to see it. Um, he only passed the link to fans through his social media and he was able to raise about 6,000 US dollars. Um, Metallica Mondays, right? This is a pre-recorded live stream where Metallica basically uploaded um, unreleased live footage on Monday and they would chat with their fans and they would do some fundraising with them. And then fourth, um, Linkin Park reacts to a Linkin Park show from 2001. This was actually a VOD premiere. Basically, they filmed themselves reacting towards their old live, um, live concert and then they premiered it and they all sat down in the chat room to chat because I think it was difficult for them to react to a video and also respond to the fans in the video. So that's why they did, they, they used the premiere function in doing a live stream instead. All right, so that said, that is the end of our session right here. Um, I want to let you know that this is, there's actually more sessions coming up. On Thursday, there's going to be a YouTube analytics session um, that's going to be held and that's going to go deeper into the YouTube analytics. So stay tuned for that. Um, right now, let's open that up for Q and A. And also for those of you, yeah, Q and A, sorry, Jenna. Hi everyone, can you see my screen? Oh, actually don't respond yes, because it'll overload the, the chat box. But um, So I'm assuming everyone can see my screen. If not, please pin my screen through the people tab. Um, so we're gonna run through the first few questions. Pablo and I will take turns. Um, so let's see. The first question is, what type of collaborations do you recommend during the lockdown? Um, Enrique or Kit, do you have any recommendations? So collaborations during the lockdown. Definitely, I think you've already seen it. You've seen it with Demi Lovato and uh, Sam Smith. You've seen it with Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber. You've seen it with other artists. Collaborations with other artists, there's, it's, there's no limitation to that. YouTube, we're all on the online world. There's no limitation to that. All you need to do is reach out to that other individual and start doing it. And you can pre-record it, pre-record um, pre your session and then live stream and do a collaboration together that way. Yeah, and just quickly to add to that, if we're talking about green room content, anything that you think is gonna be useful for people at this time, so things like exercising, how to eat right, how to keep your mental sanity, and basically how to you know, stay positive through this time, that's always gonna be uh, impactful. Cool. Second question is, uh, is it a best practice to premiere videos at the same time? Enrique or Kit, our experts. Is it I, a practice to premiere videos at the same time? Um, I would just say, I'm not sure what you mean by at the same time, but I would say that it's a best practice that one, you should always, you should try to premiere videos that are your primary focus videos. You should always try to use that function um, as much as you can, right? But it, it should be for important things. Not like everything, you would probably assume that if you had a hundred videos on your YouTube channel, not every hundred, not all those videos need to use the premiere function. Third question. Wow, this is a very long question. What if we are not handling the artist's verified OAC and we don't have an access to it? Is it still okay to upload the music or lyric video of the artist's song in the record label's channel instead of uploading it to their OAC? Yes, that is totally fine, right? Um, normally, what we recommend is that we would log for the artist, everything to be uploaded to the artist's channel, and then we would claim that, that particular content that goes into a little deeper stuff, into the content ID stuff, which I don't want to touch upon. But yes, uh, you can upload to the artist channel, but if you don't want to upload to the artist channel, you can do that as well too. Um, and some way, somehow, YouTube will be able to, uh, grab, to grab that video and pull it into the artist channel, or the artist can actually grab that video into the artist channel itself too. 
Cool. Uh, next one is will yes, will OACs official artist channels have memberships as well? Um, we hope to see that soon, hopefully in the future. Currently, not at the moment, but hopefully one day soon. Um, currently, we're still working on it, and it's soon. Yeah. Okay, next question. Um, this is a question from Ray in the chat. Uh, Gina Enrique Kit, on the first day when I first got my OAC, I could see a new music box with my songs on it when I searched my names on both YouTube and Google. But then it disappeared on the second day onwards. What happened? I think this one, you might want to contact YouTube creator support to see what's going on there, right? I, I can't, I, to be honest, sometimes there's different things. There, there, there are different things that happen on our platform. Um, and I'll be honest with that, YouTube changes different things almost every single day. Um, but I would definitely recommend you to contact um, creator support. Um, if you have, if that channel is a part of the YouTube partner program, you already have access to creator support. There's another question from the chat from Wensi C. Um, do you have updated guidelines regarding video ad creation for YouTube? I, well, take it. Uh, the, guidelines, the guidelines are already updated or are already on the YouTube help center itself. Those are always the, the most updated ones. Okay, um, and final question, but the most simple one. Will you be giving a copy of the slide presentation from Jerome? Um, no, we will not be. Um, and any form of recording or sharing this externally um, after the session is not allowed. So please remember that. Um, do we have any more live questions? I think we ran through all of them. Okay. All right, guys. Um, please also fill out the survey. Um, I think Pablo, did you? Um, somebody sent that into the chat room. Um, does anybody see my screen? Um, or did you yes. check out my screen? The you link has been shared. Yeah, you can do the QR code. You can do the QR code on my screen. You can fill out Jenna's form. Please do let us know what you think about this section. Um, the reason why it's really important for us to get this feedback from you guys is so that we can improve on our future sessions and getting it to you the, giving you the correct information that you actually want. Just in case. <laughs> uh, one, one quick plug. Um, I really appreciate the interest in getting a recording and copy of the slides. Uh, but even though we can't share it with you, what you can do is go to the YouTube Creator Academy. A lot of the lessons and insights on the YouTube Creator Academy are very similar to what you found today, and you can explore much more on your own as well. I'm also going to send another link right now. This is specifically for artists and musicians. It's called artists.youtube.com. You can definitely find also more resources in there specifically for music. Cool. I think uh, this is it. All righty then. Well, everybody, please do fill out those forms for us. Um, I think you probably got the link already. Um, Thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in and we hope to see you again soon. Don't forget there's another session on Thursday. We'd love for you guys to tune into that one too. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.